Hey, welcome to Big Lou Barbecue. Another things I want to do. And today, I'm gonna be cooking a five gallon meal for you. Yeah, a big old meal. Five gallons of jambalaya in my newest piece of cast iron. Also my largest piece of cast iron. My newest and largest piece of cast iron, y'all. Um, five gallon jambalaya pot. Look at this sweet baby here. Weighs 38 pounds. 38 pounds. Yeah, an old fat man can lift up a 38 pound cast iron kettle, baby jambalaya pot, cauldron, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be making the jambalaya in this. Let me tell you a little bit how I got it. I bought a Cajun classic piece of cast iron from a local guy at a festival and I did a review on it, a crawfish pot that I've been wanting for years. And the folks at Cajun Classic Cookware, they really liked the video. They said they liked the video anyway and invited me to come see them sometime over in Mamu. And then I did one for their uh, little cast iron grill, hibachi grill they have. And uh, they liked that too. And so I contacted them and I talked to Kimberly. Lady couldn't have been nicer. And she's over there at Mamu. It's a family run business. Her daddy was uh, started a business and they uh, make aluminum ware or, you know, have the aluminum ware made and distribute it around here and they make cast iron. Their aluminum ware is called Mac ware. All right. And some of it's like that old Magnolite stuff. And some of it's just, you know, aluminum um, soup pots and stuff, calderas and things like that. And they also have their line of Cajun Classic Cookware, which is their cast iron line, raw cast iron like this kettle, and uh, enameled cast iron. And they only sell to mom and pop shops, locally owned places, hardware stores, meat markets, locally owned grocery stores, stuff like that. You will find their stuff distributed throughout Louisiana and Texas and Arkansas and Mississippi and maybe a few other places in the Gulf South. Cajun classic cookware, family run business, and I respect that. I respect that a lot. I really like their cast iron. So I called her up and said, hey, I'll come over and do an interview. I didn't ask her for anything. If you watch my show, I don't ask folks for anything. I don't email a company and say, hey, I want to review your product or anything like that. If they contact me and I like the product, what they're offering, I may say, yeah, I'll review it, but they contact me first. So. I just decided I'd go over there and uh, just meet the folks. And she decided, Kimberly's decided she's gonna give me this little lawn, yeah, this uh, jambalaya pot, all right? Also got a lid for it. I think they have cast iron lids according to their website for the ones, but that's gonna make it heavy. I got this aluminum lid for it, all right? And it's got a clip right there, so I can hang it right there on the side of the jambalaya pot, all right? It's hanging there now, trust me, it is, all right? And uh, I'll show you when we cook it in on a propane burner here. Now, why are we making this big old jambalaya? Well, the folks at my church raising money for the youth group to go to camp this summer, you know? And uh, so I'm doing this on a Sunday morning, right? You're watching this on Cast Iron Wednesday, but I'm doing this on a Sunday morning. And we had this meeting and said, let's do a jambalaya fundraiser dinner. That sounded good. Anybody want to step up and make a jambalaya? Well, two moms stepped up. One said she'd make a pasta lie, and the other one said she'd make a pork jambalaya. I said, well, hey, I'll make a chicken and sausage jambalaya. All right. But wait, it's Cast Iron Wednesday and it's the April Pork Challenge. So why are you making a chicken jambalaya? Well, I'm gonna have pork sausage in it, but I'm also gonna have some tasso too. Some of the tasso I made, some of the tasso I bought at a local owned um, meat market, you know, and uh, cause I needed a little extra cause this is a big old pot, yeah? So let's make this jambalaya. I'll show you the tasso. Welcome to Big Lou Barbecue if you hadn't seen my show before. And uh, this is the Cast Iron Wednesday, my newest and largest piece of cast iron. Five gallon, 38 pound jambalaya pot, baby. I got it uh, seasoned up yesterday with some chicken cracklings and uh, I started the uh, chicken yesterday, uh, getting it uh, hickory smoked on my old smoky grill. So anyway, let's uh, get this stuff cooked, y'all. All right, I got the jambalaya pot on the propane cooker and I'm heating it up slowly. It's a little chilly this morning, about 50 something degrees, but anyway, you want to heat it slowly, all right? All right, well, it's pork sausage and it is a pork challenge. So I got about two and a half pounds of smoked pork sausage. Also got a um, pound or so of andouille, and I may not use that whole pound. I may only use one or two links in here, depending on uh, what it looks like. But I've got some andouille, grocery store andouille, not, uh, meat market andouille, and pork sausage. But that's not the real reason I'm calling this the pork challenge. All right, so this is why I'm saying this cast iron Wednesday meets the uh, April pork challenge requirements. I've got this tasso here that I made. Now, I made a bunch of tasso a while back, but I gave some to a friend of mine. I don't regret doing that. I'm glad I gave it to him. But I only had these two little packs. I wanted more. So I went to um, one of my favorite Cajun meat markets down in Sulphur, Louisiana, and I bought some of their smoked tasso. They've got a nice red hue on theirs. And um, 
And you see the grill marks on the back. I hung my tasso, so there's no, uh, in my drum smoker, so there's no grill marks on it. And uh, I already cut theirs open. You can see it's got that nice pink hue to it. Let me show you what mine looks like when it's cut open. All right, so I cut my homemade tasso, and it's got a nice pink hue to it too. Anyway, so we're going to use my homemade tasso, what I got left of it, and the uh, pound I bought at the Cajun Meat Market. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a whopping dollop of bacon grease. I keep the bacon grease in a jar. Got this little wood spoon here, but um, tell you what, they got this La, Pit, La Petite Roux spoon, which is good for going in jars and getting roux out. I bet it'd work for getting bacon grease out too. Now you want exact measurements? That's your exact measurement, a whopping dollop of bacon grease. Put a little bit more right there. That's probably enough right there. That's an exact measurement, whopping dollop. All right, to the bacon grease, we're gonna throw in the uh, seasoning blend. This is the Cajun Trinity. It's celery, onions, and bell peppers. This is the frozen kind. Normally, I'd chop mine up if I'm making a homemade jambalaya on my stove, but a uh, two pound package of it. Since I'm making a big old jambalaya, I bought the frozen stuff. And we're gonna get that browning up real nice right there. Smells delicious already, and I don't even have the seasoning in it. Woo! The water's uh, come off of it now, and this is um, Cajun Creole seasoning. This is the stuff I make. I got a recipe on how to make it, and I can show you if you want interested. I'm not putting a lot of that in here now, just a little bit. And you know what? It's coming, not coming out of that side too well. Let's go with this side. Just a little bit, just to get that salt on there and help these onions brown. That's probably enough for now. We're gonna add more later. Stir these up, and you won't get these onions. Real, real brown, all right? Real, real brown. Oh, I'ma like this jambalaya kettle. Now then, as I stir this trinity here and get these onions browned, you want those onions to begin to caramelize before we go to the next step. You may be say, thinking, that's a good jambalaya paddle, Big Lou. Or maybe it's a crawfish paddle. It's not. This is a masa bat that I bought in Mexico, all right? And I tell you what, I like it. I think I paid uh, 360 pesos for it or something like that. Came out to be about $4 or something. No, I paid, uh, I forgot what it was. Maybe it's whatever it was in pesos. Thought to be a little less than four dollars U.S. And um, I tell you what, I've used it for crawfish, boiling peanuts, and now this jambalaya pot, and I love it. Now the reason I'm telling you about it is they gave me some cast iron seasoning called Buzzy Wax at the Cajun Classic place, and they said uh, Buzzy Wax will also work on your cutting boards and your wooden utensils too. So I came home and got my old dried out uh, crawfish paddle, my masa bat and uh, jambalaya paddle now, right? And I put some of that buzzy wax on it and I gotta tell you, it has done a good job with the wood too. So uh, if you ever hear buzzy wax before, it's um, good for your cast iron, your carbon steel. I also seasoned up a piece of carbon steel with it. Hadn't put it on any cast iron yet because this is a big pot and it would have used a lot of it. I just fried up those uh, chicken cracklings to get this another coat of seasoning on the inside of this pot. Now these onions are starting to get browned up a little bit and we're about to go to the next step. Now, if this was Latin American cooking, they might call that the sofrito, but that's just the Cajun Trinity. Celery, onions, and bell peppers. We're getting it all browned. If you want the ratio to cut it up yourself, it's generally two ribs of celery, one bell pepper, and one onion. That means if it's medium-sized onion, use a medium-sized bell pepper and medium-sized ribs of celery. And if it's a large onion, use a large bell pepper and large ribs of celery. But basically, two ribs of celery, one bell pepper, and one onion. If you're cutting it up yourself, throwing it in your food processor, or chopping it up on your own chopping board, that's the ratio. Like I said, that was a pre-mixed stuff. All right, right here's all that uh, country sausage and that andouille sausage 
um, grocery store andouille and the country sausage all uh, cut up into, um, you know, chunks, you know, bite-sized chunks here. Some of it's sliced, some of it's diced. But we're gonna get this sausage browning up in here now. All right. That's gonna be good, yeah. Woo! All right, as that sausage begins to brown, and I turned the heat up on it a little bit to get that sausage browned up because I got more meat in there, more stuff in there. I turned the heat up. It was at probably at a medium low, probably at a medium highish. It's a propane cooker. There's no you know temperature gauge on it or whatever. Time to throw in the tasso. That's all that tasso I diced up. Now, the, theirs from the uh, meat market had a little more paprika in it, but other than that, it was pretty close to the way mine tastes. And um, it's just all mixed in together. So I had about half a pound of my homemade tasso and a pound of the stuff I bought at the uh, meat market. We're gonna throw that tasso in there and we're gonna get that all mixed up and browned up too. So there's our pork challenge for cast iron Wednesday, all right? Woo! It's smelling good. I wish you could smell this. Hey, scratch your screen right now. They invented that scratch and sniff YouTube. Scratch your screen, see if you can smell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells good, don't it? All right, I'm gonna let that brown a little bit under the lid. All right, the lid's been on it a couple, three minutes. Whoa, look at that steam come out of there. Woo! And y'all, smell that. Scratch your screen again and smell that. This sausage is getting brown. And I tell you what, it's looking good, yeah? But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add some of that browning sauce right there. This is a, a Louisiana brand. Um, I like it, but if you don't have this, you can use a kitchen bouquet and there's other brands that you can find. Just simply a browning sauce. This will give a good color to our jambalaya. Um, now you may be thinking, hey, you got to have tomatoes. Tomatoes is Creole jambalaya. And it's not really the most popular type of jambalaya in Louisiana. Tomato jambalaya is popular in New Orleans. That's that like Creole jambalaya. They call it red jambalaya too. I do have a video on how to make Creole jambalaya, but uh, most jambalaya eaten in Louisiana is brown jambalaya or Cajun style jambalaya. I'll go ahead and pull that lid off of there while I stir this pot around. We'll get that browning sauce in there, all in there on that sausage and tasso. All right. The sausage and the tasso and the Trinity have been browning. Now you may say, hey, that's looking pretty black, those onions and stuff. No, I'm not burning them. That browning sauce makes them darker than they, they normally would be, but that's gonna give a good color to our brown jambalaya once we get everything in there. Now, this is three heads of uh, large garlic, you know, not that elephant garlic, but you know, not that little stuff that comes in that nylon sleeve either with the three packages. This is, you know, the garlic you pick out and pick the largest ones out of the bin at the grocery store. And I got it kind of diced and roughly diced up all three heads of that garlic. We'll put that in there now. All right. You don't put that in there first because garlic can burn easy, all right? Which means we must be getting toward the end if we put the garlic in, right? Yep, we do want to get a little brown on that garlic, but we mainly want that garlic to boil in the stock here in a minute, all right? All right, now what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pour in a gallon, two gallons actually, of chicken stock. That's gallon one, and we're gonna get gallon two here, just a second. All right, here's the second gallon of that homemade chicken stock. Now what I did was, I cut the spines off those chicken quarters that I hickory smoked yesterday, and I took those spines and I boiled them down to make the stock with some, uh, I had some leek tops in the freezer from when I grilled some leeks up a week or two ago. I had some celery in there, a little carrot, some onion, some garlic, and, uh, and salt, of course, and made this chicken stock for a few hours yesterday. I've got a video on how to make, uh, stocks and broths and stuff like that so not the uh, point of this video here but if you want to watch it it'll be an i card above and i'll have it linked below all right all right now we're trying to bring this mixture to a boil you see that black stuff floating in there it looks like burned onions it's, those onions are browned because of the browning sauce they take on that dark color but that's what you want you want this to have that dark color that's why you put all that browning sauce in there now to this mixture i'm adding a half cup of Tabasco and a half cup of uh, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. Use whatever brands of hot sauce and Worcestershire you like. But um, that's it right there. Now, I would add more, but you know, we're taking this to the church and some of them ladies like the jambalaya a little more mild and wild. So anyway, only a half cup of Tabasco in this five gallon mixture here. Of course, it's just two gallons of the stock, but by the time we add everything in here, you know, it's gonna be good, y'all, it's gonna be good. 
All right, now, this is my homemade Cajun Creole seasoning. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a video on how to do it. It's a little clumpy because I live in Louisiana and I don't have that anti-caking agent you get in them store-bought brands, you know. But uh, we're going to put, you know, just that much. The top, most of the flavor is coming from the Tasso and that Tabasco. That's enough right there. I would say maybe three to four ounces of it. All right, maybe just looking at how much I use in the jar, you know, so let's stir that around. Now this is beginning to approach boiling stage. I'm gonna add in all that chicken meat. Can you smell that? It smells like that hickory smoked chicken I did yesterday out on the grill. And I pulled it all off the bones and it's in big chunks, you know, the chicken will fall apart and kind of get stringy anyway. And uh, that's going to be so good in this jambalaya. So that was 10 pounds of uh, chicken quarters. I cut the spines off to make the stock. I cooked those chicken spines in the uh, stock now and uh, I pulled off what chicken meat I could. So this is that boiled chicken meat from the um, chicken stock we made. We'll dump that in there too, all right? Just dump it all in there. So we got the hickory smoked chicken meat and we got that little bit, maybe what? Cup, cup and a half of the boiled stuff. Let's get it all mixed in there, good, nice. The chicken was cold, so it dropped the temperature a little bit. But this is gonna be a good, good jambalaya, y'all. Whoo, I've never made a jambalaya this big before. By the way, you may notice that I don't actually script my videos or uh, write storyboards or anything like that. I kind of make my videos up as I go along. You may have noticed that because I'm just an untrained amateur. I'm not a, uh, you know, well-trained professional, so, you know, I just make stuff up. Same thing with recipes, especially jambalaya. Jambalaya is a recipe that is meant to be varied and meant to be creative, all right? Um, it's not like a paella where people get all offended about you not having the authentic, you know? Jambalaya, you can get creative with it, all right? I mean, don't get stupid with it. Don't put ground meat in there. But you know, you can get creative with it. All right, now this has come to a boil. And, uh, I've got a gallon, a little over a gallon. Remember, we put two gallons of liquid in there, chicken stock, and uh, you want to have, you know, twice as much liquid as you do rice. But we also had a cup of uh, Worcestershire and Tabasco. It's half cup each, but the total made another cup. And then there was liquid from the uh, Trinity that came off there because it was frozen, and, you know, the sausage produces a little uh, runoff and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more than a gallon of rice. But we're just going to go in here, and this is parboiled rice. If I was making this on the stove, I would do uh, white rice. But because this is um, out here in a big pot, I'm doing uh, parboiled rice. It won't get as gummy. And the thing with parboiled rice, you can make it on your stove too. You can continue to stir parboiled rice uh, as it cooks. White rice, you just gotta stir it once real quick after you dump it in and then let it cook or you'll just get gum. So if I'm making it for the family inside, I use white rice, I'd stir it once, cover it up, and I don't uh, stir it again. But with this, and this big old pot, and all this goodness, we gotta make sure that all this rice is mixed in there well with all the goodness, you know? So as this boils, I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes. All right, yeah, I got a chest clock as a timer, so we're just gonna run it five minutes, you know? That's what I'm using as a kitchen timer. When that goes off, we'll cover it up and let it continue to cook. About 30 seconds before it goes off, we're gonna add our last ingredient, all right? While it boils, we just continue to stir and get that rice all mixed in with this goodness. You can see it's already getting a good color to it, but we want to boil it for five minutes. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Man, this is going to be good. Okay, it's been boiling for about four and a half minutes. And that rice is starting to get cooked and it's getting thick to stir. But yeah, that's why I use parboiled rice. You got a pot this big, you're gonna have to stir it. You know, a little um, six quart stock pot on your uh, stove or something, you can use white rice, you don't have to stir it. It'll mix in there together real well. All right, now we're gonna throw in our final ingredient right here. I'm gonna put this in last. This is about three bunches of green onions I put in there. Most of it's top, some of it's the little white part but three bunches of green onions, stir that around.
All right, stir those green onions around, get those all in there. You can see this rice is beginning to cook. And once they're stirred in there real well and all mixed in and through, and you can tell that rice is like that. Now we're gonna cover this up. I'm gonna let that go probably just about a minute just to build up a full head of steam underneath that pot. We're gonna turn this fire off and we're gonna wait 25 minutes to a half hour and this jambalaya will be ready. All right, just turn the fire off and wait 25 minutes and the rice will be ready and perfectly cooked. All right, partner, this may not be the best jambalaya I've ever made, but you about to witness the biggest jambalaya Big Lou has ever made. Look at that right there. Let's, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that. All that rice is cooked. All that goodness is there and got that nice brown color to it. All right, we're going to bring this up to the church. I'll tell you about how good it tastes later. Hey, thanks for watching uh, Big Lou Barbecue. Normally, I do a taste test at the end of my videos, but um, this was taken to the church. Now, uh, it was five gallons of jambalaya, and there were three other jam two other jambalayas there, so three jambalayas to choose from. And um, we took just a little bit home, just a little bit. Enough for my son and I to have dinner that night and enough for me to take a little bit to work the next day. So... Anyway, uh, I guess it was good. I got some compliments on it. Anyway, um, I can't thank the folks at Cajun Classic Cookware enough. I really appreciate having that big jambalaya kettle. You will be seeing it on, more on Big Lou Barbecue. I'll cook other things in it as well. Not just jambalaya, but I'll be cooking some more jambalayas too. One of my favorite things to make, y'all. Hey, that was um, one of the best ever made, but it was definitely the biggest jambalaya I have ever made. I appreciate you watching. In French, they say merci. In Spanish, we say gracias. Gracias por mirar.